Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the desert we tell. And it's episode 167. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How <laughs> yes. are you, Nick? Ah, oh, exhausted. You're exhausted. Exhausted. It is. We are recording this on the day of the move, the day after the sort of big sort of in between. Oh, it's moves. a whole week of moves. Yes, yes. There's a lot of movements going on. Yes, I'm recording in an entirely new place. Indeed. This is my house, everyone. It's very odd. Welcome. There's a lot of. <laughs> I don't know if I've left anything incriminating out. I'm worried like my address. I've just, I like to write my address yes, on the just mirror. Yes, like poster yeah, you've yeah. got with your address on. Yeah, and... all of my bank details and everything. <laughs> so there's yes. a cat behind me. Yes, there may be cat noise. Um, I was thinking about the poster. There's a big poster of a cat. Oh, no, there's a cat behind you as well. There also, there's also a cat down there as well. Yeah, don't move your chair back too much because Django likes to sleep right behind Good. where your chair is. That's, that's nice to know. There we go. So, yeah, if there's random cat noise, then enjoy. Then that's the cats. <laughs> but you're surviving the week of moving. Oh, just. Just about. Just about. Just mm. about, indeed. Yeah. It's taking its toll, but we're getting there. <laughs> okay. We're getting there slowly. Get, we'll get through this together. Everyone is group really therapy. Annoying. This is only halfway. What do you mean? So I'm now into storage and into sort of limbo. Now I've got to get, eventually at some point, get everything back in again. <laughs> yes, but then the removal men do that for you. That's true. That's the nice bit. This is the hardest. Yeah. Oh, bit. completely. Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is the this is the this is the pain in the ass bit. It's as so soon as you get the sorting keys, sorting and chucking stuff in the tip and all that sort of nonsense. And then you get to open everything up, <laughs> mainly the booze, and go. Why have I still got this? <laughs> yes. You get to go through the inventory of all the booze that you've left in my house for storage. Yeah, that was, and, I feel that uh, was unwise. <laughs> definitely should have. I, I really feel I should have gone with like a mark pen around all the bottles. <laughs> And like mark the levels of everything. I'll share a picture of all of the bottles on the shelves and everything, people. But your triple sec is, is nearly gone. Nick has hundreds, well, not hundreds, but like scores many, of, many. of bottles and had to store them somewhere. So I said, well, I'll put them in the house because we need them for the cocktails. And I, I swear to God, when I unpacked them, first look thing at that them. Ha- just fell out was a bottle oh, of triple no. sec. Oh no. oh, no. Now I have to make margaritas. <laughs> no, I did look at it and go, oh, what can I make with the new huge <laughs> amount of liquor I have? And I went, no, it's not mine. It's Nick's. Well, poison's cabinet. Research. Poison research, cabinet. mate. Research, okay. So Tell me what you use so I can buy some new ones. I've kept an inventory. As it's as me. As long as there's a list. I'm an Irish Catholic. You don't think I'll be able, I'll be telling you in great detail and giving you money that is way above what it's worth. Fantastic. I'll but I'll have been that. drunk and it'll have been worth it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, any poisonings this week? Ah, uh, God knows. No, you don't know. Uh, 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 might have been. Who knows what you've left in your wake? <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the house. Don't know. What happens, happens. Well, exactly. That's oh. what I'm going with. Whatever happens, that happens, has happened. Lovely. Well, speaking of being just exhausted and stealing all your friends' booze because of it, <laughs> I think it is time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. We certainly should. And there are many of you this week, so thank you very much. Woohoo! First of all, I must say thank you very much to Veronica Killica. To Sa Majesté Julienne. I hope I did that right. To Charlotte Fertile. To Sabrina Peters. To Sarah and Marty. To April. To Veronica of OC. To Michael A. Royer. And finally, to Lucy Dever. Thank you very much. Thank you. For allowing us to butcher your names. Thank you so much, you delicious, sexy Patreon subscribers. We apologise if we've got any of those wrong. Many, many Or if we got them right, it was all on purpose. It was all just fluke. Absolutely. Uh, We had fun over on Patreon this week. There were lighthouses. There were lighthouses. People were into the lighthouses. People love love a a haunted venue. (laughs) A haunted, a mystery. There was a couple of mysteries in there. We don't often go into the mystery category, but you know what? Why not? Why Why not? not? Because it could have involved murder and crime. Uh, Indeed. And it's a crime that we don't know what happened. (laughs) Yes. It's still a crime. <laughs> so therefore, it's entirely legitimate. <laughs> and people... So who was it who was writing them? Is singing along. Haunted venues. <laughs> haunted venues. Yeah, what other haunted venues haven't we covered? Haunted cars. Do we have we done haunted cars? No, I don't think we have. You know, Stephen King, Christine, we'll do that. We did haunted boats. We did do haunted we did boats. boats. Did we do Ghost trains? Ships. I think we mentioned the haunted we train. Haunted trains. I don't know if we've done a specific episode about haunted trains oh, so, yeah, that involve a murder. Definitely mention of a of a train or two. We mentioned Abraham Lincoln's ghost train that <laughs> rattles through the land. There must I'm be sorry. more venues oh, yeah, out sure. there. No doubt. Yeah, but if you want to know what the hell we're talking about, please come and join us on Patreon if you're able. It is completely flexible from $5 a month, and there are higher tiers as well. You get extra content from us every single week, as well as video clips from 
each episode and cocktail making videos and bloopers and chats and book clubs and oh it's a wonderful it's a, magical it's place a smorgasbord of excitement indeed and all of the money helps us to do this show it supports us making even more content and buying more booze. And buying more booze. <laughs> Occasionally we buy booze with it. I think we did get about two years in and went, should we be using that money to buy booze yeah, rather much, than yeah. our own money? <laughs> pretty much. It's we like, just... <laughs> oh yeah, we've actually got some money. <laughs> the guilt was just, no, 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 we must buy it ourselves. We can't possibly. <laughs> but yes, come and join us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash The Poisoner's Cabinet. We're very close to, to a big number of Patreons, actually. We are. So tell all your friends. To join. Yeah, absolutely. Just do it. Just just force them at at <laughs> at, at vodka point. At vodka point. <laughs> On pain of absence. Well, um, Nick, are you ready? Let's give it a go. See what happens. To drink cocktails and talk about boys. I need cocktails. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> the very thought of it, mm. sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. An espresso martini, perhaps. <laughs> That'll do the trick. Or 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 we could drink poison and talk about cocktails. Oh. Shall we go with the first one? Uh, yes, whatever that one was. What, oh. what drugs were they? Lemsip. Lemsip. <laughs> we're gonna t- we're gonna drop a couple of Pro Plus and some ibuprofen and those really good like ultra strong like antacids. Oh, well, now you're getting fancy. I oh, know. I oh, know. Oh no! When you get to a certain age, those <laughs> drop one of those before bed. Peaceful night sleep. Oh, it's marvelous. So so cool. <laughs> Achingly, achingly. Hip. I know. You remember when you used to roll into bed at like three a.m., not even take your makeup off, especially you. I, I never took my makeup no, off, no, no. and then sort of wake up and then go to work at seven a.m. the next day. Yeah. No, yeah, I with <laughs> smudged mascara and dodgy <laughs> lipstick. Yeah, did that a few times. Well, luckily, you worked in the mascara and lipstick factory. So. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> Shall we go with the first one? Yeah, yeah. whatever it was, I've forgotten. <laughs> but okay. Hooray, hooray, hooray. It is my story this week, and we can't, we can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell, and it will flavor our cocktail of the week. My story, so my pick, and this week's secret ingredient is makeup makeup make cosmetics cosmetics cosmetic finery for your face <laughs> finery for your face yes right i've never heard that that sounds weird but you have just now mate yeah, trademark I trademark trademark i don't like that <laughs> you don't you don't have to like it That's dreadful <laughs> you're not part of the focus group <laughs> for my makeup brand <laughs> finery for your face yep <laughs> Big plans for that, Nick. Right. Okay. <laughs> the launch is going to be in a sad working man's club. <laughs> it's it's going to be me crying into some gin. Yeah. While applying some under eye concealer. <laughs> it sounds a delight. I can't wait. But makeup. So there, in this episode, there were some other in- potential ingredients, but I oh. think you would have thrown stuff at me. Well, I'm very nearly throwing stuff at you over makeup. Oh, no, makeup's got loads of possibilities. Has it? It does. All kinds of makeup, different sorts of ones, colours, textures. So if I just had a red drink. Well, I would have gone, why didn't you pick rouge? <laughs> yeah, I would have been annoyed at that. If you just went, oh, I face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so, there you go, face. The face. <laughs> well, you know what? I trust you, Nick. Okay. I'm not sure I should have in the yeah, most stressful you, you, week you've had in yeah, a while. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, may, you may shout at me. <laughs> With makeup. Yeah. As the inspiration, the ingredient, what have you come up with? We're going to have. We're going to have. Mm. I don't like your tone. <laughs> we are going to have some hot lips. Okay. Am, am I allowed that one? Yes. Hot lips. Hot lips, because it kind of sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> hot lips. I mean, mouth, maybe we could have saved it. Yeah, there are very know, few cocktails right. called mouth. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, if mouth was the ingredient, if you'd said just mouth as the cocktail for makeup, then I would have had a problem. I'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Hot lips, that's great. Uh, lip, lipstick and, yeah. The lipstickiness. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. All okay, right. I'll, um, I'll accept that. I, how very kind. I will accept it. Most generous. Pending the tasting. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> it all hinges there's, there's on the tasting. There's always a caveat, isn't there? Well, there's sometimes you do a great name and I'm like, oh, I don't care what it is. But this hinges on this the flavours. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it is high time for us to skip into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. So Nick, hot lips. Hot lips. Hot lips. lips. Hula hand. Ooh, now this looks nice. This looks like my cup of tea. Uh, yeah, I thought, I'm thinking, should I like this? Now, given that 
you are transient at the moment. <laughs> I don't know if that's the nice way of a saying hobo. it. A hobo. <laughs> just you and your bindle. I do know some of the stuff is in there because you kept asking me, do you have tequila? Do you do, have, do we have this? Where's, where's the tequila? And I was like, this? there's your on? tequila and it's right here and I haven't drunk all of it yet. 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 So... I see this is a tequila-based one, and but there's also this salt on the side. It looks refreshing. Mm. Now, you know me, I love my tequila-based drinks. And anything that looks like a margarita sounds like fun. <laughs> Ooh. But also, I was worried about you texting going, oh, this is going to be dubious. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some substitutions. Is this finally the time where you go, is it supposed to be beer, but I got you creme de mouth? Yes, pretty right. much. Okay. It's all just creme de mouth. It's <laughs> tequila and creme de mouth. Well, I think it is time for us to dive in. Yeah. So across my larger table, Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Yep. I'm getting, ooh, oh, flavours. Flavours? Flavours. Surely not flavours. To be honest, I took a sip from the side with the salt. And I got way too much yes, salt. Yes, as, as, as did I. Um, so yeah, let's try that again. Um, mm. Okay, I like that. There are different flavours going on. There is tequila. There's there's some... That's not always oh, a bit mellower than I thought. That's got the citrus in there. But there's something else. Floral, <laughs> even. But that's really nice. Oh, I like. like this. Good, good, good. But I, but it's, it, has it got more magical things in it all that I should have spotted? There are one, two, three, what? four, five things in there. Ooh, that's a lot. And you've you just you've guessed tequila. So. Okay, so tequila, citrus, so yes. lemon, lime, both. There's some lemon. There's some lemon. Oh, okay, nice. And and some lime. No. No. Right. <laughs> okay. You were building up there. Well, <laughs> something else liquor based? Alcoholic? Yes. Triple sec? No. Oh. Yeah, I thought you were there. <laughs> hmm. There'll be syrup in this. So some sweetness to balance mm-hmm. out. So agave? No, the recipe calls for vanilla syrup. Did not oh, have vanilla syrup. No. So I use cane sugar and some vanilla extract, which I don't think has worked, or I didn't use enough vanilla. No, I can a... get a bit oh, of vanilla, vanilla in there. Okay, good, good, good. Now you've said it. I th- but I don't think I'd want much more vanilla yep. in that than that. But what's the what's the other thing? What's the other thing? So there, are two, the, there are two other things. Two other things. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting a very good margarita. So we have the ancho chili. Nice liqueur in there as well. Yeah. Now this so the recipe calls oh, hot lips. Oh, spicy! It's my day. The recipe calls for jalapeno infused tequila. But then it also said if you haven't got that, then use a chili liqueur and i thought oh, oh okay. i do have chili liqueur there we go um, Very so nice. i use that instead mm. um recipe also calls for mezcal ah uh, smoky smoky which i which we don't have the cabinets run out of mezcals so i need to get that remedied so i use twice the amount of tequila i use <laughs> this, one of the the i i subbed in oh. more tequila for the mezcal oh so there. we're missing that smokiness so we're missing a bit of smokiness and and proper vanilla syrup in there proper vanilla syrup. but there's still one thing in there there's, there's still one, one, thing more, one more thing one more thing in there more citrus more citrus it isn't lemon and it isn't oh, com- lime. you know i don't know any other citrus fruits that's it lemon pineapple. lime citrus there's no other citrus fruit no, there's never pa- shit fuck off i was about to say that no and i also never would have guessed that <laughs> pineapple so there's pineapple in there as well really yeah. oh i can't you've you you've did this a couple of weeks ago you mm, slipped some pineapple slipped in there some pineapple in there. now all i taste is pineapple <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's that very nice. is so nice that is a good twist on a margarita yeah you can adapt the how hot you want your lips to be um, <laughs> with your... I mean, there's so many puns, Nick. It's just my brain has gone into overdrive. On this one, I put in about a third of an ounce. So two thirds of an ounce to making two. You could probably certainly have it a lot stronger. Me, moderately so. A yeah. bit more chilli in there. Well, I do a lot of margaritas with extra spice in them. So um, I'm not going to lie. When uh, Again, when I moved the poisonous cabinet over here, it did steal a little bit of the ancho chilli yeah. stuff. But that's not that mm. strong. It's really not that spicy. No, it's not. It gives it a tiny bit a of nice heat. A nice bit of warmth and a bit of heat. Lovely flavour. Yeah. I mean, that stuff is amazing. If you yeah. haven't got it, people, even if you're not a spicy person, <laughs> in, in your drinks regards, whatever you do in your private life is your business. But... That ancho chili stuff is so it's good. It's definitely one because we're coming to the bottom of that bottle, and I'm definitely going to reinvest in another bottle. Yeah, it's not I cheap. want to. I want to get one for myself. It's like though. forty. It's about forty quid for a bottle. Bargain, uh, but it is worth it because you don't use a huge will, amount of it. I will and it get adds, through it in a weekend. <laughs> Sinead gets through a huge amount of it. Normal people don't. I often make a margarita with jalapenos in it. Mm. So if you've got a jar of jalapenos, even the brine that it's kept in, yeah. if you want a little bit of the saltiness and that flavour, it's infused. 
pour a little bit of that in with your margarita. Also, just some jalapenos because they're a little bit softer. They're not going to be blow your head off. But I will get my fiery hot chili sauce <laughs> and put a tiny dash in my margarita just for the just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. Just for the hell just of it. Just a live life on the edge. That is deliciously tasty. No, Ooh, good. tropical. Well, we have our hot lips, hot, hot lips, lips in hand. We have pincered them with our little hands. Mm. Are you ready for a story, Nick? Oh yes. So with makeup. As the ingredient and the inspiration, did you have any ideas of where we might be going well, with Well, I did think, were you going some sort of like re powders and <laughs> such like, ointments, balsams and balms made of deadly things? Well, it's been often requested from us to do a little bit more about all of the poisonous cosmetics that are out <laughs> there. Is. The history of poison in cosmetics and i was digging around and found a story then i thought oh this is an opportunity to, d- to delve into the victorian era nice and their fabulous fabulous penchant for deadly deadly cosmetics <laughs> um now this story isn't strictly deadly it okay. does have crime involved in it because really recording the number of deaths that were caused by cosmetics Tricksy. funnily enough not many were recorded, <laughs> given the millions and millions of pounds that were yeah. spent on them. So we're going to stay Victorian era, but there's plenty more beforehand that we could cover and maybe we will do in other mm. episodes. So over the centuries, we know that poison has made its way into the toilets, the dressing tables of many a lady, and not just fire Julia Tafana. <laughs> One love, Julia. Egyptians love to just shove lead on their face. Yeah, I was like, well, I was like, you think Queen Elizabeth and her lead... White. Well, absolutely. Lizzie the First slathered, slathered yeah. her pockmarked face. She did, she did have pockmarked yes. skin, and that's why she wore so much white lead-based paint. It was the fashion, but also shove that on there, and it's lead. And people go, "Well, we can't be absolutely sure she didn't die of poisoning." It's like, well, she may have died of many, many things. Many, many things. Yes. Yeah, but she, her she face did. Face falling off was one of them. Yes, she did well. <laughs> she did bloody well and went the way of her father. Where in the end, it was just gross. <laughs> she really gave that "Hey, I look like a ghost" vibe. It's it's founding. It's a good look, but no. No matter the time of the age, the trend of TikTok tutorials, people have always sought ways to dress or treat their skin to meet their own particular standards of beauty or decoration. But let's head to our favourite era, the Victorian age, Mm -hmm. to see what was in fashion back then with our old friend Poison and to tell the tale of one woman who sought to benefit heavily from all poisons and everything that was beautiful. So we're going to start with a little history (gasps) of cosmetics in the Victorian era because this is fascinating. This is really, really great like before we get into our little crimey story. So by the Victorian age, we've surpassed the days of really heavy makeup, mm-hmm. those excessively white faces and red lips. Now that's very firmly Tudor, Elizabethan, a little bit into, I guess, Georgian. Uh, bit of, yeah, a bit of Regency thing going bit on Bit of there. Regency. So, so Big old moles and things they used to... Well, all yes, that sort of stuff. drawing that on. Now, it's yeah. not completely gone, but it's gone in a very different direction. You don't want to look painted and no. you don't want any imperfections on your face. We have a big old problem in the Victorian era. And the big old problem is Queen Victoria. Mm. Because she has thoughts. I'm sure she, she has many. She has thoughts and feelings on society. <laughs> on many great things. And on yeah. how a lady should look. Yeah. Queen Victoria, if the films are be to, to be believed and the TV series, oh, what a beautiful lady she was when she was younger. <laughs> and then developed into a haggard old woman. Yeah, she was quite terrifying at the end. Yeah, a little bit. But she commands what flies in society. Oh, absolutely. And she saw cosmetics as base and common. Well, indeed. No respectable woman should be wearing Tarts. It's for tarts, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%, yeah. Decorum, propriety, that was the order of the day. Skin cosmetics, she decreed, were impolite, yes. vulgar, unladylike. With the lower glasses. The only people who would dare to wear them were actresses. And tarts. And tarts. <laughs> <laughs> well, women have low morals, but she was screaming tarts while tarts. Her, her PR officer was going, why don't we just say women of low morals? Tarts! Tarts, I tell you! I can't imagine she had a PR officer. <laughs> She very much did. <laughs> she's a fucking prime minister. So, yeah, she said, she said what she fucking liked. <laughs> she did, there was someone going, we'll rewrite that for history. Kill Toy. the whores! <laughs> if Queen Victoria hadn't been censored, there would be a lot about shagging. We all know Queen Victoria was Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> she was shagging Albert to death, quite literally, mm. so she didn't care about how she looked. She was like, no, yeah, you don't need to wear makeup. She's like, you're the queen. You're the queen. <laughs> you get away with a lot of shit without and makeup. <laughs> Albert is exhausted. 
He, she really did actually oh, yeah. ride him to death. They were, yeah, they were at it a lot. Yeah, and she went they had to... had 400 children. But she doesn't have to gussy up for anyone, so no one in society shall. No, 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 no. And this is where this trend that still filters into today of you don't need makeup. All this bullshit of, you know, oh, no, no, a lady. Natural beauty. Natural beauty. Freshly scrubbed look. <clears throat> freshly scrubbed face. That's what we want. We don't want you to be painted. But also, can your skin look absolutely flawless? Can you just be perfect, but no makeup? Perfect. Perfect. Angular. Angular, but but not too thin. No. Not too gaunt. A little bit of the gaunt in was fashion. <clears throat> uh, can you have sort of a weeping, dewy eye that looks like you're dying? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love that? Absolutely. <laughs> this was this was the thing. You are washing your face. You could be clean. Queen Victoria is all about the cleanliness. I'm not surprised. <laughs> the amount of shagging she was doing. <sighs> Moisture stripping soap. That was the way forward. And, yeah. and soap back then had no moisturising qualities oh, God, no, to it. You're not. just <laughs> rubbing yourself raw. <laughs> and then you've got to go out in public and go, well, no makeup. But redness, absolutely not. Can't have any of that. Cleanliness. So I just and don't leave the house. Just don't. Just don't go out. <laughs> so much safer. It's a Victorian era. They were like, well, our houses are fabulous. <laughs> well, exactly, yeah. Also, they're killing us, so we have no energy to also, go the out. the servants don't care. And if they, dare, <laughs> if they do, I'll beat them. <laughs> <laughs> the servants are weirdly serving us a lot of dumplings while cackling. <laughs> but cleanliness is not only respectable, it is necessary to ward off diseases. True. So you've got to be nice and clean. But beauty is essential in bagging a good husband. Well, absolutely. If you are a lady. But also for men as well, demonstrating your good character and your good state of mind. Mm. If you look good, you're not mental. Well, no one wants to marry a degenerate. No. Absolutely. And Some... if you look good, everyone knows that out- outward beauty Absolutely. is the perfect indication of what you're like on the inside. <laughs> Pure and lovely inside and out. <laughs> Always works. If anyone is feeling triggered right now, this shit has been going on for hundreds <laughs> of years. This is where it started. And it had been starting for a long time before. Yeah, before, yeah, a long time before. Well, that. no, beforehand, they were like, paint your face, do whatever drama you want. And men had to just deal with it, or women as well. Just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. Oh, at that point, the chaps were there with the makeup as well. Okay, yeah, it's oh, they great. loved it. <laughs> Love loved it. it. Big old wigs. But no wigs anymore. None no, of that. None no of that. Wigs. Shining fresh complexion indicated yeah. you were free of base diseases and skin complaints. You were of good breeding and good morals. Freckles? She must have been riddled with disease. <laughs> a tan? Prostitute. Mole? A witch! Well, also a tan, especially if you were a chap, if you had a tan, it meant you were outside a lot. So you were a manual labourer yes. type thing because so, you are out exactly. in the sun all day. Whereas a gentleman wouldn't obviously would have wouldn't be out in the sun he'll be in his no, club no um, you would hint <laughs> so of the tan as well the world. <laughs> so. are you from foreign climes <laughs> so none of that absolutely no no and a lady a lady getting a tan <sighs> Ooh, disgusting disgraceful so here and we have the problem everyone wants to look fresh and clean and perfect but you can't look painted or obviously perfected you've got to be clear skinned without any assistance at all if a lady was seen wearing makeup she would be whispered about she would be the subject of so much gossip and derision that she could be cast out of society you know it was not worth it so this is where you've got two choices you've either got to scrub your face clean of any blemish or mark and then pinch your cheeks and bite your difficult lips. to scrub freckles away that's what people tried to do mm. they absolutely tried to do with freckles and also the sun with the freckles and freckles change over age i used to have loads of freckles yeah. when i was younger I was a teenager I was beset by freckles now none no none because you scrub them just all of the tequila i put on my face <laughs> and this is the time of you have to pinch your cheeks and bite your lips. Right. It's the only way you can get rouge on your a bit, a, a bit of color because you you've got to have a flush of color, of youth and beauty and oh vibrancy and there's people literally twisting your skin, <laughs> trying to do that and biting your lips, biting your lips to have that bee stung kind of mm. little rosebud lips, the English rose kind of look. Avoiding the sun constantly <laughs> as well under all your right. parasol, or if you don't want to do all of that, you can just apply makeup covertly. <laughs> Yeah. Scandal. Nail that no makeup look. We think we invented it right now. Ooh, no. You fucking didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. A gentleman's never going to get close enough to tell, but you've got to be careful because it's the ladies at tea who are going to be staring Hell at you, no. peering at you across their teacups. Now, near the end of the Victorian era, attitudes are starting to change in regards that the cosmetics companies are going, well, we could get in on this. Mm. There's a lot of desperate women out there. Let's make some money. So they can start peddling medical cures and treatments for skin complaints so a woman can get that natural look of deathly white (laughs) with a little bit of a glow. Absolute perfection. Absolutely. 
so then you've got the advent of more advertising because newspapers and magazines, mass production, mass distribution, more adverts go in there, more wonderful stories, people are reading them, sales go up. Absolutely. So this is where we get some of the most famous adverts that we've all seen and we have personally shared. Oh, indeed. <laughs> more crazy products and women just eating up the beauty advice. Now, what would be the main component of such a uh, treatment for the face, Nick. <laughs> I just don't know. Could it begin with A? Do you think it's arsenic? <laughs> arsenic alarm! Arsenic alarm! Arsenic alarm! It's been a while. It hasn't, yeah, I'm thinking it hasn't. We haven't had that for a while. <laughs> On the main episode, it's been yeah. a while. Oh, the Patreon has been going off like, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but yes, arsenic. Guys, it is time to talk about the classic arsenic wafers advertisements now arsenic as we have discussed with some of our expert witness in the past was great for getting rid of blemishes mm. you ingest it it is going to kill off the red blood cells and it is going to get rid of anything that that blemishes your face yeah. going to kill some other shit it's as well kill, yeah it's going to kill a lot of other stuff it's, as well. it's going to be a problem so arsenic wafers were not actually wafers they were pills you sort of nibble at them mm. ingest them over time and they had strict instructions about when you should consume them or what you should do with them so we've got a few adverts here. Most of these actually from the USA, but love this one. Dr. Sims Arsenic Complexion Wafers. Now, this is a very famous advert. Some people mm. have seen it. A woman's face is her fortune. Well, true. After a few days, use will permanently remove all blotches, moles, pimples, and freckles, producing an entrancing, beautiful complexion that shames the use of powders <laughs> and creams. Warranted, perfectly harmless. Sold by all leading druggists. Another box that's in the Smithsonian Museum from Dr. James P. Campbell's. Again, another famous brand. Big headline. Guaranteed absolutely safe and harmless to anybody. <laughs> His ones are specifically good for freckles. Moth. <laughs> okay. Moth of the face. Just a moth. Face, if a moth eats face, your face. Face, face moths. <laughs> they come for you in the night. Blackheads. Mm, pimples. Yeah. Vulgar redness. <gasps> Not vulgar redness. Rough, yellow, or muddied skins. Oh, no one needs that. And other facial disfigurements. <laughs> Just general ugliness. <laughs> That's it. His adverts also had the headline, Look at your face. Look. <laughs> it's dreadful. <laughs> and then it's Do a, it and again. Now get you to the nearest drug. It's like, look at your face. Oh! <laughs> Well, yeah, it's going to do the trick. When they say facial disfigurements, I do think of the black adder line going, but I've got this big, huge growth in the middle of my face. That's your nose, ball trick. <laughs> this is another product by Sears Roebuck catalogue in 1902, so a bit later, but this is promoted to men as well. The great trouble hitherto has been how to make this beautifying principle safely available and at the same time avoid what is detrimental and injurious. No one wants an injurious thing. No. Arsenical solutions mm -hmm. love it have utterly failed and until a recent discovery by a french physician and chemist Ooh, not french. named Fancy. <laughs> the internal administration of arsenic has been attended with more or less danger as well as disappointing results in the direction for which they are intended their effect is simply magical the most astounding transformation in personal appearance being brought about by their daily use. Even the coarsest and most repulsive skin and complexion marred by freckles and other disfigurements. <laughs> What's wrong with freckles? <laughs> no one likes a freckle. No, no. Slowly changes into an unrivaled purity of texture, free from any spot or blemish, whatever. The pinched features become agreeable. The form angular gradually transforms itself into the perfection of womanly grace and beauty. Lovely, lovely. Used by men, the favourable results are the same. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last line is in capitals. Ladies, you can be beautiful. You can be. No matter who you are, what your disfigurements may be. If you've got enough money, you can be. You can make yourself as handsome as any lady in the land by the use of our French arsenic or effort. Making it French, making it very fancy. Inevitably, there were problems with these products. One or two, I imagine. They had clear instructions. Not many reports of deaths. There are some anecdotal reports. And a little bit more delving, maybe in deep, deep, deep into some archives might actually reveal the stories, but they would be very short. Safe-ish, but you've got women going blind from using them too much and others, and there is uh, one report of a woman dying mm. because she just kept taking the wafers. 
And it's quite, I want to be beautiful. Yeah, it's quite sad because if you think at that time, if someone yeah. did have acne or had any very normal skin complaint and just feeling that I have to take as much of this as possible to look normal and be accepted in society, you were literally going to kill yourself for the pursuit of perfection. So, yeah. Yeah. No, unfortunately, I thought they didn't... didn't quite realise quite how deadly these things were yeah. they're plastered like entirely perfectly non-deadly and safe is on the box mm. and then, then you're not going to think I can't imagine they had a any more than two of these will kill you well um, yeah <laughs> label inside well we told people not to take any more mm. of it going, yeah, well you yeah, know and the principle behind it was uh, suspect okay. into the 1870s society finally went look we're all for natural beauty but women look freaking deathly these days <laughs> just a little bit of powder and some treatments to help them rather than just try to pull their own faces off and bite their <laughs> lips to death so later in the Victorian era, you had rouge coming back in mm. and powders. That was it, but very sparingly applied. Yes, very supple. So Sarah Bernhardt, the great actress, wore makeup off stage and she was uh, lambasted for applying her rouge in public. <laughs> but she's so famous, everyone wanted to do the same. So mm. everyone, and soon it was like, oh, if she yes, wears it, she wears it. Absolutely. You know, she didn't give a shit. You also have beauty advice columns. And there's one that has been reprinted that was originally in Harper's Bazaar called The Ugly Girl Papers or Hints for the Toilet. Toilet being, yes. if we have to explain uh, it, about your beauty <laughs> regime, not what to do. In the, no. <laughs> advice to ensure any homely girl had hope. Like a tailored dress, using powder and rouge sparingly, and coating your face with opium at night and washing it off with ammonia the next morning. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, mercury mixed with lard on your eyes. Okay. Bit of an eye treatment to get the eyelashes get growing. The eye yeah, nice, yeah. nice. And the waif like dead look. So that's where Belladonna, which is still used in eye drops today, yeah, yeah. but was more just like get a berry, throw it in your eye, <laughs> because they wanted the watery look. Mm. This this wafy, emaciated sort of <gasps> sort of oh my god, she's so pure and lovely. <laughs> she's a ghost wafting around our ground. And it di- dilates your pupils as it well, does. doesn't it? So yeah, it makes them really big. It makes it really big. And make yeah, it, so yeah, dark some... and watery. Yeah. And just sort of wide-eyed and sort of... Wide-eyed and dead. Wide-eyed and dead. <laughs> Paints and enamelling out of fashion by then, except if you're going to a very fancy ball or you're posing for a painting. So do you remember John Singer Sargent's picture of Madame X? Do you know that painting? I can't. doesn't. I'm, uh, no. I'll share it on, on some of the posts. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. This woman is very sensual looking. It's incredible. She looks great. But she's wearing makeup in the painting. And it was also suggested that she had been enameled, like as in painted with white skin, which is stupid because the painter is like, you literally have paints in yeah, front absolutely. of you. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Make, you have some white paint, make her look whiter. Make shit up. Yeah. But no, no, he had to paint from life, apparently. Mm. Dear. More and more women are keen to access covert cosmetics and the very latest facial treatments. And as a result of this, a woman emerged purveying the finest products to wealthy women in London. Mm -hmm. So now we come to the story of Sarah Rachel Russell. Mm -hmm. Do you know of her? I can't say I do. Well, soon you will. Sarah Mm -hmm. Rachel Russell was born around around 1814. Okay. Now, some is known about her childhood. (laughs) Not not entirely completely blank, but not, not a huge amount. Her parents were Jewish. And they had a theatrical background. Now, this may be attributed because supposedly she was a cousin of Henry Russell, who was a very famous composer and singer and musician. Family are not rich, though. Not rich at all. So they are scraping a living together. She's finding her way through life. So her jobs included selling rabbit skins, used clothes and dried fish from a cart in Wapping. Glamorous. If she was short of cash, she'd do a spot of fortune telling for passers-by. Nice, like it. And others said she either was a sex worker herself or she would help stock up the local brothel by going to Drury Lane and getting actresses to come and work in the brothels. Okay. Round, them, round, round them up. Round them up. Round up the girls. Round them up. So, yes. so But she was paid for whatever she did yes. there. She was involved in the industry. She did not escape the law. She was in and out of jail frequently. Theft, prostitution, swindling. One count of perjury where she was providing an alibi for a well-known local man named Belasco. 
who'd been charged with manslaughter. And then the judge were like, okay, you're lying, go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Between stints in jail, she married a few times. First was to a chemist. We don't know how that ended. Some say he died. Some say he walked off. <laughs> the second time she was married to a man named Jacob Moses, he did walk off two years later. He deserted her. Mm. Funny postscript is that he ended up on board the Royal Charter, which in 1859 sank off the coast of Wales with the loss of 450 souls. Oh dear. So it was this massive shipwreck. But he was on it. Who's on it? Okay. And so she was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> She ended up running a fried fish shop and a baked potato. Sort Lovely. of play of that. So just for fried fish and baked potatoes. Fish and chips? Well, I'm thinking fish and chips, but yeah. they just made it very clear it was hot baked potatoes, not okay. cold ones. So those could have been ingredients. Yeah. But then you would have just wanted a jacket potato. Oh, yeah. well, I'm not a massive fan of a jacket potato. What's wrong with you? <laughs> They're every now and then. Oh, wait, how can you not want a jacket potato? <laughs> I don't understand you sometimes. But she had her fried fish shop and baked potato shop just off the Strand. Eventually, she met a man named Philip Levinson. They were much better suited, six children together. Okay. But continuing her various jobs of selling fish, hawking clothes, animal pelts, rounding up prostitutes because they run free sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> she did at one point fall very ill. And the illness resulted in her hair falling out. Oh. Now, this is one of the stories about her. It could be a bit of a legend. However, she's a poor woman. She can't afford a decent wig. She had beautiful, thick black hair, apparently. So she consults every doctor and every person that she can to find what, what will help mm. my hair to grow back. What can I do? And she finds a restorative cure that works out let's assume it was rosemary oil because apparently that's the greatest thing that's ever happened <laughs> but then she realized okay i've just got that elixir but i'm onto a good thing here how desperate was i mm. to find something that will restore my beauty oh. and there are things that work but also how much money did i pay and how much money would other people pay she is gripped by the desperation to restore her beauty thousands of other people must be in the same boat. Very true. And they are probably all wealthy and willing to pay handsomely for discreet treatments that will further their position in society. So Sarah went about setting up her own cosmetics business. She started by selling hair dyes to local people, made a pretty penny, but she didn't want to keep up a back alley job. The real money would be in a proper shop. Absolutely. Yeah. A respectable, ostentatious, glamorous shop that she opened in Bond Street. Oh, yeah. Quite grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to do it, I mean, how the hell should she afford that? Well, I mean, Bond Street cheap. now versus Bond Street then, but it, prominent. It's still Pro prominent. prominent. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, she's done a lot of swindling in her time. True, true. Yeah. She styles herself as Madame Rachel. Nice. Madame Rachel, trading on the popularity of a recently deceased famous actress, Mademoiselle Rachel. And she claims to have been a relative or a friend of hers at different times. So she trades on the name while also calling herself Madame Rachel. I mean, it's her middle name. She opened up a shop selling her homemade beauty products and elixirs. But the trick with her was she was a master of marketing. Mm. She knew exactly how to show off all of her goods. Rachel dressed the shop in opulent, exotic decor, like proper boudoir, sort mm. of modelling it after the harems and everything, and like a, a perceived that she thought <laughs> would look like. She herself dressed in flowing robes, jewels, and wore crystal talismans around her neck. Lovely. Her shop slogan was, beautiful forever. Very sort of Death Becomes Her vibes going on. 100%. <laughs> this is what she sold. It is that kind of gown that is that sort of thing. You can be beautiful forever. It yeah. is Isabella Rossellini in that. Picture her. That's her. She published a pamphlet with this name. She published advertisements that did not directly promote her products, but just said, please be aware of imitations. Mm. The only genuine things can be found at my shop so please don't buy imitations like everyone going oh wait a minute what there's imitations who's she it must be good there are imitations she? <laughs> there. they must be good <laughs> oh my god they must be good and she would send out all these advertisements explaining how women could achieve untold beauty with her products now when it comes to her products I thought we could have a little fun oh, okay but if we're going to have fun do you have some here <laughs> are we going to try them oh, oh, oh my god we're going to have a spa day let's have a spa day well if we're going to do that we're going to need a drink okay <laughs> So, Nick. Yes. We have our drinks. We do. We've topped up. 
Yes. Time to have a little fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, we were talking about Madame Rachel's products. We were. In her fancy, fancy shop and I the wonderful marketing that she used. Now, before I actually reveal the products, I thought we'd play a little game of Rachel's products or stuff that is available on the market right now. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to be terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the crazy names and the sort of stuff. Okay. Let's see how well you do. Oh, God. I feel, I don't know. I feel like you'll do well at this. So I'm going to read out a list of names and you have to tell me whether they're old or new, like okay. Rachel's ones yep. or available now. Yeah. Okay. So the first name, Royal Arabian Face Cream. New. That's Rachel's. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brain Dust. New. That is new. Yeah. That's good. Okay. okay. Mulberry Silk Cocoon Skin Polishes. Mulberry Silk Cocoon Skin Polishes. Mm-hmm. Old. New. <gasps> you can get them right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. so one, out of, one, out of, one out of three. Okay, one out of three. Okay, next. Magnetic Rock Dew Water. New. That's Rachel's. Oh, God. I'm awful <laughs> at this. <laughs> Circassian Golden Hair Wash. Circassian Golden Hair Wash. Mm. <laughs> Rachel's. Well yes, done. Rachel's. Okay, okay. <laughs> well done. Okay. Snail Serum Skin Repair. New. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just that'd, be, that'd be a step too far even for them, uh, Victoria, I think. <laughs> Two more. Okay. okay. Sense of Peace Face Cream. Mm. I mean, it could easily be either. But mm. let's, let's go with, with Rachel's. It's Rachel's. Okay. Last one. Diamond Powder Face Mask. Diamond Powder. Rachel's. That's new. Is that new? <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, <dear. laughs> oh. It just goes to show. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, any of them could have been either. <laughs> <laughs> so little has changed. Yeah. So little has changed, me old friend. Yeah, she had great names for perfumes, and I couldn't mm. fit them all in. So, Rachel's creams and lotions were based on concoctions and secret ingredients obtained from Arabia. Oh. Ah, yes. Famously, Arabia. Famously. Everyone loves that. Oh, well, yes. it's distant and exotic. And... Distant, exotic. Picked something yeah. out of a hat. And her most popular product was the Magnetic Rock Dew Water. Right. This was not accurate at all so variantly it was a uh, dew that grew on the rocks in the sahara and then in morocco right. and then in various places uh, but yes this this magical famously <laughs> rock la lack of moisture in the sahara that's sahara. what made it so magical oh Nick. right i made that's you what made it. 300 pounds a bottle or something <laughs> <laughs> i shit you not i shit you not bought to england from the deserts of morocco okay by swift dromedaries a nice bit of camel action going nice on. Nice bit of camel action. I had to look up the difference there, and it's the hump difference, yes. isn't it? Dromedaries have, have two. They have two. Yes. Your average camel has That's one. one. <laughs> but swift ones, swift, swift ones, swift galloping, ones. galloping to yeah. Rachel. She and she alone had attained a license from the Sultan, just the Sultan, okay. to import this miracle water. And it was a steal at two guineas. <gasps> Bargain. Which is... Uh, it's about ninety pounds. <laughs> yeah, so I can't imagine it was a big bottle. It's not like a barrel, is it? <laughs> it's going to be a little pipette full. <laughs> yes, and also it's it's, it's not <laughs> Jew rock water. Other <laughs> names that she used: Armenian beauty wash, honey of Mount Himatus soap, alabaster liquid, Arab bloom face powder, and many many hair dyes. Mm. All of which had amazing names. I'm no doubt. Absolutely. They're it listed in court exotic. transcripts later on. Of like. Mm -hmm. She advertised, as I said, heavily in newspapers and magazines, cryptically naming her products, but insisting they were only available through her and not to trust any imitations. She wrote of her famous clientele in the adverts. Again, not going like the arsenic wafers, come mm. and buy some arsenic wafers. She just mentioned all the stuff that she'd been doing. So Madame Rachel had the honour of supplying and furnishing the elegant cabinet toilette of Her Majesty, the Sultana. I'm sure she did. By whom her costly Arabian preparations have been so fully appreciated that another order has been received. <laughs> whose success in restoring and beautifying the complexion, imparting a bewitching brilliance to the eyes, removing all defects of the skin and teeth and adding fresh grace and luminance to the hair has been acknowledged by the most crowned heads of Europe mm. and the aristocracy of this country. 
everyone's talking about everyone, it. Everyone is going mad for this stuff. Mm. So what was in her products? Probably some like water from a puddle out the back. Water and bran. Nice. Basically cereal. <laughs> That's it. Water and bran. Also very likely that she was skimming other products that were out on the market that contained lead, prussic acid, and our dear darling friend, <laughs> arsenic. She had to give them something that would work a little bit. And arsenic, so readily easy yeah, to come by, dressed up in a fancy package. So yes, there were poisons in her cosmetics, but she's going to go with the cheapest, easiest option. Because why not? Now, arsenic is pretty cheap at the time as well. Like, yeah, I just fucking get it anywhere. Yeah, barrels of the stuff. By 1863, she was thriving. She guaranteed her products would produce miraculous results and everlasting youth was guaranteed. I mean, a guarantee. What can you... Can't ask for more than that. And women were desperate, desperate to get hold of these products that promised such natural beauty and they paid whatever mm. they could to get them. They would slip into her stores in heavy veils. Lots of veiled women... <laughs> Walking into the store, which which is going to attract attention on Bond Street. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a great picture of a of a shop in Bond Street, and I don't think it's hers, but one of the articles I was reading was this is Bond Street shop, and anyone who turns up with a veil is going to have to like sort of like press themselves against the wall and slink in, kind of like <laughs> don't look at me, no, no, no. Well, they probably just get out of their carriage and then just run, run across the pavements and yeah. into the into the store. No one to be seen going in, but it was the place to be, because all the society ladies whispered, mm. "You must go down." Must go. must go to her. Must go. They would go for beauty consultations and also makeovers, treatments nice. from Madame Rachel herself. She did offer, as well as sort of facial consultations, to go. You need some bran on your face. <laughs> she would offer enamelling as well oh, okay. if you had a fancy ball to go to. Mm. A little bit of painting, but perfected. To her standards, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would look very, very fancy. If the woman couldn't meet the fees, though, that she quoted for the treatments, she could just blackmail them. Ooh. Because not only are you going yeah. into the store and you're getting... their names out there. Yeah, you're getting bogus products. If they balk at the extortionate prices that she's charging... She goes, well, well, what if your name got out there? Yeah, I've seen absolutely. you in the store. And you need cosmetics, do you? The scandal that yeah. she could spread. Do Want you, to keep your visit a secret? That's a fee. They could be highlighted in their ne her, her next mm. advertisement. 100%. <laughs> 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 yes, fr frequented by the Countess of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it said that. The Countess of blah, 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 came in here and everyone, I bet I know who that is. The Earl of Grantham, Hugh Bonneville was there. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> he, he's had work he's done. He's had work you know, done. He's had work done. And fine. <laughs> and power to him for doing it. There's a fee for keeping your your visit secret. You come in, you pay for all the products. You pay for discretion. Yeah, you pay for the products, but also she says, oh, sorry, do you not want anyone to know here? Well, I'm going to need a little extra. Can't pay your bill right now? That's absolutely fine. We'll give you ex credit. We'll give mm. you credit. Extortionate rates. Yeah. Why don't you leave your jewels as collateral and I'm going to pawn those. Or your children. No, your, your, your children. <laughs> God, no, no, no one wants those. <laughs> they have a chimney before you know it. Well, they could go to the chimneys and get all the, you know, the arsenic <laughs> trioxide and everything and then bring it back and go, oh my God, that was a very long drawn out process. <laughs> she also preyed on the insecurities of other women. Not only blackmailing them about, oh, you've turned up here, but she promised them long lasting treatments for even higher prices extra money would not only guarantee that they would be beautiful forever this this extra level but she also offered to introduce them to men okay noble men gave them names people that she'd met maybe in high society and said if you you know sign up to this program pyramids yes <laughs> this pyramid scheme. you know what you need a course of six treatments yes yeah, i'm to the monthly the monthly subscription cancel anytime you like yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely flexible but also and then i'll introduce you to people and yes, she did. And the price comparison is scarily similar mm. to a lot of stuff that you will see today. The treatments didn't last. The men never showed up, but the women were too humiliated and fearful of scandal to press charges. So they slunk away into the night while mm. Rachel counted her cash. Funny. But then she came a cropper with a scam one day with one lady, Mary Tucker Borodale. Now she's a colonel's widow. Now, <laughs> you get information on her from the court transcripts, which would mm -hmm. be resulting in, in what happened. And <laughs> she seems like a woman 
It's kind of a fussy, mad widow kind of. <laughs> the colonel nice. has passed, but I need to look. Be- I think I should have a new husband. I'm in the mood for a new <laughs> husband. I don't think she was particularly young. She wasn't particularly old, but she she was buying everything. Rachel said. Hook, line, and sinker. She had visited her multiple times, multiple times, bought all the stuff. And so Rachel goes, okay, right, I've got a loyal customer here. She sells her on the, oh, you need the the higher tier. You need the yeah. higher tier. The, the beautiful forever tier. I think it was something like 25 guineas. Maybe it was Maybe it was more. It's equivalent of a thousand pounds today. Not insubstantial. No. Pay for this, but also promise to introduce her to a nobleman to a lord and she paid the money yeah yeah here's all the stuff the brand mm. rub it on your face and arranged a meeting with them the chap who was involved a lord a genuine lord met this woman and were like i have no idea who you are i have no idea who madam rachel is i'm <laughs> i'm happily married who are you stop yeah. trying to have sex with me and also what the shit is on your face yeah, there's a lot of cereal on here. <laughs> this is a, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm. And Mrs. Borodale was so angry and humiliated and had been done out of about £5,000 that she pressed charges. Go Screw it. Her. I don't care. I don't care. Bring her to court. I will stand in court. So Rachel would stand trial in 1868. The trial packed, packed with people. I imagine all those women who were... Who were- had been too worried about their reputations to, oh yeah, um, to, to press charge in the first place. They were all there queuing up, going, oh, "I can't wait to see this." Queuing up, but not only were they the people from high society wanting to see her downfall, it was people from lower classes, anyone, yeah. just going, "Well, well, who's the woman who's conned high society?" And let's see who fell for it. Yeah. Let's see who turns out. Oh, it's so good. In one transcript. Mrs. Borodell takes the stand and there's in brackets is the, the bits that when I say it or what the reaction in the court was. She said that Mrs. Rachel had mentioned something about the sum of 1,000 guineas being required before a lady could be made beautiful forever. <laughs> Laughter. I understood from her that it was necessary that I should be made beautiful forever before I was married to the rich and good man she'd introduced me to. And then she went on to say... I did not know how the process of enamelling or beautifying was to continue. Laughter. I did take more than a hundred baths at her direction. She always said that I should do as she told me. Oh, that's a bit sad. sad. She just was just so desperate trusting. to meet someone desperate. and then taken a mm. hundred baths. <laughs> or she, maybe she was just really smelly. Maybe it was like you need to gussy yourself up, yeah. like, but everyone's laughing in court and they're laughing at the yeah. stupidity. Because how, if how someone could you fall for such a silly thing, but isn't it crazy yeah. that they're standing up and going, "Well, I paid this much money. How many people today yeah, might stand well, up in court absolutely. and go, oh, I paid for this to get spiritual enlightenment'?" Yeah. Mm. The jury was deadlocked at first in the case because they went, "Everyone's stupid. <laughs> what? What?" They were deadlocked, but a second trial was held. Well, everyone got over the shock. Mm. Rachel was found guilty after 15 minutes of fraud. Yeah, good. They were like, clearly she has conned clearly everyone. What was wrong nuts. with the first jury? Yeah. She was sentenced to five years in jail. Released in 1872. As soon as she was released, straight back to peddling away. Well, absolutely. And these final days are sketchy in detail. She obviously did not have the shop in Bond Street. She did not... Yeah have the wonderful robes and the crystals and the jewels and people visiting her but she still was able to sell her product she gave no shits whatsoever and there's something to be admired about that well you know (laughs) she she had good hair dyes the the hair dyes worked apparently they just go with that yeah make a name on really good hair dye did that (laughs) she was arrested five years later stealing necklaces from one of her clients Um... so she's doing well but then she stole necklaces Mm. By the time she went back to jail, she was quite ill, suffering from Qatar. <laughs> she would die in prison in 1880 um. from dropsy. Mm. Apparently her daughter, she had six children, one of her daughters, and I'm paraphrasing here, went on to be an opera singer. Okay. But then got very depressed about being cut for a role and shot herself in the back of a taxi in 1888. Wow. Okay. So 
that was Rachel's story. But a final thought, mm. and I am going to do a Jerry Springer here. Yeah, I was going to say, it's very Jerry Springer. I am going to do a Jerry Springer here. <laughs> there are products that we're using today that may well be the subject of mockery and derision in many years to come. We are pretty comfortable in injecting toxins straight probably into our Probably not that many face. years. So <laughs> no, probably just... in about three months. <laughs> Everyone's yelling, what are we doing? What are we doing for the pursuit of a flawless look or plump lips or big gold titties? <laughs> <laughs> every generation is willing to do crazy things in the pursuit of beauty or acceptance and you know what you do you, you crack on do what you feel comfortable with beware of the risks take no shortcuts when it comes to your health but don't let anyone shame you for wearing too little or too much makeup or for your skincare regime we still live in a world of unattainable beauty standards of fat phobia of ageism and we are compelled to spend literally thousands on products that will in the words of one arsenic advert give an astounding transformation <laughs> take my advice in my capacity as a beauty influencer who does not exist <laughs> okay. and will never get that charlotte tilbury sponsorship deal <laughs> that i keep trying for no matter how many carrier pigeons i send Go for it. treat your skin well as a living breathing literal organ that it is and look after yourself Youth fades, but life rises from its ashes. There will never be another you, and you are a hot slut. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the story of makeup in the Victorian era nice. and Madame Richel. Madame Richel. Mm -hmm. Love it. There you go. Pretty good. Little that's taste good of makeup. Oh, Madame Richel. Oh, Rochelle. Yeah, that's quite good, actually. Rochelle. Oh. I've been saying Rachel, Rachel the whole time. Rochelle. Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> La Rochelle. Yes, yeah, so mm. I was going with a French sort of twang. Oh, no, no, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's, I would say that's some balls, but good for, good for her. I mean, well, she, she, she went for it. She did. Yeah, she, she was like, everyone is willing to pay for this. Everyone's willing to pay for this stuff. I see a and gap it, in the market. Yeah. Well, it, and is it any different to now? Really? I, it's rare that we can 100% say that, but... <laughs> Shades of today. No, because no, there's bollocks out there now that people pay thousands upon thousands of pounds for. Mm. That, yes, just it's some latest the fad. And I do it. I 100% I do it, even knowing that it's stupid. <laughs> you know, we, we scroll the internet, we load our skin up with stuff, and then after a while we go, like, why, why did I why do did that? I do that? No, why did I do that? Why did I remortgage my house with that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> some of the beauty products right now, they, like what Rachel was selling, you look at some of them, I'm not going to name brands here, but some of them, the price point on them, how good can it be? What have you discovered that no one else has ever discovered? There are things out there today that are thousands, tens of thousands of pounds yeah. for sort of certain sort of ointments and what all have the you. caviar kind of uh, yeah, cream those and those of... those diamond face masks. Mm. You literally use diamonds to diamonds scrub to your face. Your diamonds, face. <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Now, how much of that does, does diamonds make any difference as an as, as an exfoliant than <laughs> sand <laughs> or than anything else? <laughs> I'm thinking probably not. No. No. It's just glass. <laughs> so, but it costs a billion times more. Yeah. It's, it's all packaging but, and, and it marketing. sounds fancy. That's what Rachel so, did. Yeah, exactly. I am that person. When you go to the beach, I will go, oh, no, get the, get the sand and, and, and exfoliate. Expo get yeah. the mud on you. Get the mud on you. Natural. 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 Lovely. That. I'm also the person, that if I see a fad, I'm like, I 100% need that. <laughs> I want an LED mask. And it costs, I don't, it, like, a 200 quid? Yeah. They are, like, red light, blue light. I need that in my life Do for you? no reason. That will, you'll use three times and then it'll sit in the drawer. No, I will use it a lot. No, you won't. In the first month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it preys on insecurities, doesn't it? Oh, without going to, Without going to after school special yeah. on this. Oh, you, no, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it does. Yeah. We all sort of see that. Well, this is the easy way. Yeah. Of easy, doing yeah, something. Easy way of doing it, absolutely. Yeah. You know what, guys? Mm. Cleanse, moisturize each night, have some water occasionally, and invest in lots of lots of ill-advised things. And just, one of them will work. Just enjoy yourself. Just have fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> and put on the makeup. Put on all the makeup. Oh, put on the makeup. Fuck the natural look. Oh gotcha. Put on all the eyeliner, everything yep. that makes you feel happy. You and if you don't want to wear makeup, on. don't do that. Wear extravagant <laughs> clothes. 
Well, what do you think, people? What do you think of the cosmetics of the Victorian age? What do you think of Madame Rachel? What do you think of her business mm. and her procuring her wares to all the wealthy ladies? Who was at fault here? Was anyone at fault, really? And do you have thoughts about how nothing ever changes? <laughs> <laughs> I never will. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of wherever you listen to this episode. Tell us your thoughts, your feelings, your beauty advice. But most importantly, while you do it, mix yourself up some hot lips. Have some lovely hot lips. Hot lips. Yeah. To complete your evening routine. Absolutely. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's very, 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 very nice. <laughs> You're right. Very, very, very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Very like nice. Very drunk. It's very nice. It's very special. Definitely. Any variation of margarita is well, generally exactly. good. Just knock back the tequila. You have a grand time. Woohoo! Yay! Don't forget to come and join us on Patreon if you haven't already. Please leave us a review on Apple iTunes because it really helps to promote our podcast and support other podcasts that you listen to out there with reviews, with comments, and with general lovely thoughts. Thanks for listening, guys. We have been the people inside the Poisoner's Cabinet. We will see you next week. And remember, your loved ones are... Trying to kill you. Oh, yeah.